Well, thanks everyone. And thanks for giving us your time tonight. And like Katie said, we're gonna go over um, tandem and our T-Slim X2 pump. And then at the end, we are more than happy to answer any questions. So either put them in the chat or write them down and we will address them to the best of our ability. If you can't answer them, then we will find an answer for you. So what I'm gonna do is we are gonna go through a uh, PowerPoint presentation just to keep me on task because there's so much to say, I will go off to the left and off to the right. And I just wanna, you know, stay, stay, you know, front and center. So here we go with the PowerPoint presentation. And let me know, Katie, can you see that? Nod your head. Okay, excellent. So um, T-Slim X2 is the pump that we have for uh, Tandem. That is our pump with different algorithms. And I'll go over that. Um, control IQ technology is what we're going to focus on, but we're also going to talk about uh, basal IQ technology. So first, I want to just show you a little presentation here. It's really kind of neat. The, the big reason why I always like to open these, let me open this, um, is I really like to show everyone how easy it is to go around on our website and find what you need. So here is our website. I just clicked that link and that link we're gonna share with you so you can go to that and, um, and check out things on the website. But what I wanna show you today is just some real world uh, information. Here, let me get all of everybody out of the way. Um, so you can see, and, and you know sometimes it's a little choppy, but this is just a, a minute of people saying how much they love their Control IQ pump. never thought it was possible for me to be this in control of my blood sugars. It's completely blown me away. It's completely changed my life. I'm able to simplify my life so that way I'm not consumed on the numbers. It was the first time since I was 16, 35 years ago, when I felt normal and in control. I uh, wish my parents had had this for me when I was growing up. Control IQ has helped me out majorly with my highs and my lows. It's literally the best decision I've made for my diabetes management in my entire life. Once I set it up, my life became my life again. <laughs> All right. Well, that's enough, right? <laughs> 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 All right, back to business here. Let's go. All right, that's on our website. So there are some other videos and testimonials and so much information. And if you just are, you're not on a, on a T-Slim yet and you're ready to go for it, go on the website, get you started. So anyway, the T-Slim X2 has two different algorithms. It's all the same pump, but we have the basal IQ pump and we have the control IQ pump. And we'll talk more about that um, in a minute. And I'll tell you what each one of them does. Oh, and yes, by the way, they're both with the Dexcom G6, which equals no required finger sticks for calibration. So this is a basic uh, little bit about the T-Slim pump. For those of you who have never heard of it, it's what you'd expect in a modern device. It's touchscreen and it has Bluetooth wireless technology. It's two-way Bluetooth now. It has a micro USB port. So that port can be used to charge the rechargeable battery. And also, and I'll talk about this in a second. Also, it has updatable software and that's where you're gonna do it just with that little micro USB point, uh, port. It has a glass screen so you can touch it, but it has a metal an, um, anodized aluminum case. So it's never gonna crack. All right, so it's designed to be used with or without these advanced features. So just in case you're the type of person who just really wants a basic pump, it's a pretty good choice for a basic pump. It, you don't have to have the CGM with it. You can use it as a basic pump, but without the CGM, you don't have any of the automated features. It's as simple as turning it off if you don't want the automated features, turning it on if you have the CGM and you do want the automated features. Everything all at once. 
So this is how you do the update. So when we get FDA approval for any new features with the pump, you will be notified or you can check on the website, probably hear from your friends that there is an update available. Some of them need a prescription from your doctor, which is pretty simple to get. Oftentimes, most times, it's either a small training module with the test or a larger training module. <clears throat> and once you pass the test, you'll get a code and you'll be able to update your pump at home. <clears throat> so it's the same pump with new um, information in it. Your software will be updated. <clears throat> so it's the pump that gets updated, not outdated. So as you know, you have a four-year warranty when you get an insulin pump. And once you get that insulin pump, your insurance is not going to pay for another pump for four years. So if you buy an, um, a pump that's not updatable, that's all you have for four years, unless you decide to buy a new one, <clears throat> cash. But this pump, whenever we get FDA approval for something and we're constantly innovating, then you will have the ability to update your pump. So let's talk about basal IQ technology. And I think the last time we all met, <clears throat> the people that were on the TSLIM X2 had the basal IQ technology or were just updating to that. Because last time we met before COVID, we were still in the studies for control IQ. <coughs> Excuse me, talking all day and then talking all night. <clears throat> so with our basal IQ technology, what it does is it predicts and helps people prevent lows with no finger sticks, of course. <clears throat> but what it's doing is predicting that you're gonna hit 80 by the CGM values. And I'll show you a graph on the next slide. That if you're gonna hit 80, you're predicted to hit 80 within 30 minutes, it's gonna stop your basal insulin. And that's indicated by these little red lines, the vertical lines here. And it will stop it until you could stop it for five minutes if you're very next, the next CGM value, if it's gone up by at least one milligram per deciliter, it's gonna turn your basal back on. Then if it drops down again and it's been going below, I mean, if it's going um, down again below 70, then it is going to stop your basal again. So it's going to predict and prevent you from going low. So in the clinical studies that we did for basal IQ, 30, 31% less time in low, and 91% of the people said that it was simple to use, which is huge because some of the other um, automated features on different pumps are hard to use. They're a little complicated. And for 91% of the people to say it was easy to use, that's pretty good. So this is how basically how basal IQ works. So it will, if, if you see, if the CGM tells the pump, the algorithm is going, oh my gosh, if we're going down, we're going down in 30 minutes, you're gonna hit 80. So they, it stops the basal insulin. And as soon as it turns right back up, again, see this one is higher, it starts the basal insulin again. So right at your basal rate that you and your doctor have programmed in your pump. So that's the basics of basal IQ. Now, some people still choose to be on basal IQ because it really works for them. So now let's talk about control IQ and what control IQ technology is. So control IQ technology is an advanced hybrid closed loop system. So it's advanced because it actually will not only turn up your basal rate when you're predicted to hit a certain, certain threshold, but it will give you an automatic correction bolus using your settings in your pump to calculate how much you need to bring you down. So that's why it's advanced because it actually will deliver an automatic correction bolus. So it's designed to help increase patients' time and range. And later on in the pres presentation, we'll talk about time and range ADA um, guidelines are 70 to 180 is the desired time in range. And that's measured by your CGM, by your Dexcom G6. So it adjusts insulin delivery based on 30 minute predicted values. Because as we know, 
Insulin is not an on off switch. It takes a little while, 15 minutes, 30 minutes to actually start working if you turn it down or turn it up. So our algorithm is predicting where you're gonna go by your Dexcom G6 readings. And so if it's predicted you're going to hit, and I'll, we'll talk about this whole um, treatment range um, in a few minutes, but it's all in predictive values. If you're predicted to hit a treatment value, a threshold, if you're predicted to hit another threshold, it will adjust your basal insulin. So the things that you need, and remember, if you're going into this new and you say, okay, I want to get a control IQ pump because this presentation is so awesome that I'm totally sold. So these are the components you need. You'll need to get the T-Slim pump with control IQ technology embedded in it. And then you'll also need the Dexcom G6. Okay, so both of those things need to be ordered um, when you get the pump. So what control IQ algorithm um, does, it's, it's protection from highs and lows because it will turn up and down your basal insulin to try to keep you within these um, 70 to 180 um, target range. And then it has the automatic correction bolus and the pump is using your correction factor. It doesn't learn you. We tell the pump that this is your correction factor and your, you and your doctor decide what correction factors you should use. So the automatic correction comes from that. Um, automatic pre-population of the Dexcom G6 in the bolus calculator. So when, because Dexcom is um, FDA approved to dose off of it, we, when you tap the bolus screen and it comes up, it will say your blood sugar is say 185, do you want correction? And it'll just calculate it right there for you used, using your settings. And then, um, and so that's something very new and we we're all very excited to get that. Of course, there's no calibrations with the Dexcom G6 that are mandatory. You can always calculate if it feels, if you feel different than the CGM's telling you, but it's never gonna prompt you to calibrate. Therefore, it's never gonna kick you out because there are no modes. So you have your, D, your G6 showing to your pump and control IQ is on and you make the decisions on whether you need to calibrate or not. So with control IQ, we have the basic control IQ that will modulate your basal base to keep you between 70 and 180, but we also have the sleep activity. And the sleep activity, it actually is a narrower range. So you'll turn on the sleep activity or you'll schedule it for when you're going to bed, when you usually go to bed and when you usually wake up. And we're gonna talk more about sleep activity in a minute. So with the sleep activity, it's going to aggressively modulate your basal to keep you between 110 and 120 by the time you get up in the morning. So sleep activity is meant to be used when you're sleeping for five hours or longer. It's not really meant to be used all the time because there's no automatic correction bolus when you have sleep activity turned on. And then we have exercise activity. And the exercise activity is a different algorithm, different uh, treatment range where it's going to turn down your basal rate at a lot higher rate to keep you from going low when you're exercising. So we'll talk about those ranges in a minute too it's going to try to keep you a little bit higher. So when you're working out or walking or shopping, or I have a friend that turns it on when she goes to um, Costco, people that go low when they're gardening, that's when you're gonna turn it on. And then it's really easy to use. Control IQ, the pump is super easy to use. There's no complicated um, criteria to stay in closed loop. You turn on control IQ, you have CGM values, and it's going to be in closed loop. Um, that's pretty much all you need for that. So here's the terminology you're going to you're going to hear for control IQ. You're going to hear a target range. There's um, the target range is the 70 to 180, and that's where we're trying to keep you. Okay, it's the ADA standard of care as ideal glucose range for people with diabetes. The treatment values, they're the 
prediction the predicted CGM values that trigger control IQ to act, either um, increase or decrease or give an automatic correction or stop your basal. And those are the treatment values that the pump is using when it's predicting you're going to hit these values. Your target BG, it's going to be 110 when you turn on control IQ. And that's used to calculate either a correction that you give yourself or a um, automatic correction bolus that the pump gives you. It's going to use that 110 target range. It's automatically going to change to that when you turn control IQ on. So did those, hopefully those make sense and we're happy to answer any questions about that. And um, when we, cause those sometimes are a little bit um, blurred. So if you guys have questions about that, please ask them. All right, so here is a graph to show you what happens with control IQ technology. And I've talked about this range of 70 to 180, right? So this right here indicates that your basal rates, so everyone's gonna put in their basal rates, either what you've already got in your pump or if you're new to pumping, you and your doctor will talk about it and your doctor will give you settings that go in there for your basal rates. If you have your basal rate going and your, your control IQ um, algorithm predicts that you're gonna stay between 112.5 and 160 within 30 minutes, it's going to maintain your profile setting. It's gonna maintain your basal rate that's programmed in there. But if you are starting to rise and your CGM values are going up, 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 and the pump's algorithm predicts that you're gonna hit 160 within 30 minutes, wherever you are, it is going to increase your basal rate. So that's how it's predicting, uh, in 30 minutes, it's gonna hit 160, increase your basal. And that will be indicated by uh, the blue top part of the diamond. And then if the pump predicts that you're gonna hit 180 within 30 minutes, you're still going up, you're still going up, it's gonna, if you're going at this rate, you're gonna hit 180 within 30 minutes, it is going to give you an automatic correction bolus based on your correction factor that's in your pump. And it's gonna to try to bring you down to that 110, okay? So down on the bottom part of it, if you, you know, you're maintaining your basal rate and then you start to drop and the pump predicts you're gonna hit 112.5, if you want to know what that means, 112.5, I'll tell you. It's If it's predicted that you're going to hit 112.5, within 30 minutes, it's going to decrease your basal rate. And it'll be indicated by an orange diamond on the bottom and a blue B here showing where your basal rate, where your basals are running. But if you're going down, you're still going down. And the algorithm predicts that you're going to hit 70 within 30 minutes. Well, it's going to stop your basal. It's gonna stop your basal for as long as it needs until you start coming back up to 70. I mean, back up to the 112.5 again, okay? So this is how it works. It starts here with your personal profile. So in other words, it doesn't need to learn you. You teach the pump. These are my profiles. This is my correction factor. These are my carb ratios. And you put those in there along with your doctor, your educator, whoever helps you with your settings. And that's where the pump starts. And then it starts to modulate for you. It works for you. Okay, so automatic correction bolus. Well, believe me, the automatic correction bolus is amazing, but it doesn't eliminate the need for a food bolus or a correction bolus if you continue to go up, okay? So the pump still needs to know what you're eating, okay? If glucose values are predicted to be over 180 or up to 180 within the next 30 minutes, Control IQ technology calculates a correction bolus. It's gonna use your correction factors. Of course, those can be adjusted. So if it's not bringing you down enough, talk to your doctor or your educator. If it's bringing you down too much, then talk to your provider, okay? Um, it is going to calculate a correction bolus, but it's going to give you about 60% of that value. It's already increased your basal rate. So then it calculates, it gives you about 60% in, in the attempt to bring you back down to the target of 110. OK, 
Okay. I keep waiting for people to jump in because that's what we do when we talk in person. Um, an automatic correction bullet can occur once every 60 minutes. So if you've given a bolus, say at noon for lunch, it won't do an automatic correction bolus on its own until an hour later, until that, an hour after that bolus was delivered. And then say it gave at 105 maybe, it won't give another automatic correction bolus until two o'clock, okay? So you can, um, you can always cancel a bolus, you can, um, but any completion of another bolus, the automatic correction bolus won't happen for another hour. Um, so what it says on the top, it doesn't eliminate the need for a manual meal or correction bolus. So sometimes because it's giving the 60% and, and the increased basal, it still may not be enough. So you can always go in and give yourself a manual correction by tapping the bullet screen and giving yourself 100% of the correction that's, that's left. All right. Okay. You still need a meal bolus while using control IQ technology, true or false? And since you're all muted, I know you're all going, no, you still need to do a food bolus. See, you still need to do a food bolus because eating carbohydrates adds so much glucose that modulating the basal in a correction bolus is really hard to get on top of that. Gotta keep track of time here. I don't want to yammer on all night long. Okay, six o'clock. All right. So the sleep activity is the greatest thing going. So to enable the sleep activity, um, you program sleep schedules when we're training patients or when patients are reading about, you know, control IQ, it, we always recommend setting a sleep schedule. So basically when you go to bed at night or when you're starting to relax, then you're going to start your sleep schedule. And then when you basically wake up in the morning and before you start eating your breakfast, that's when it's going to end. So you schedule it just so you don't forget, but you can always start it on your own. So um, you can manually enable it. Again, it's not for anything like a nap. It's basically for when you're going to sleep for five hours or more. And it'll automatically turn on if it's on the schedule. So remember, there's no automatic correction bolus when sleep is enabled. What it does is it really aggressively will modulate your basal. If it's predicted you're going to hit 112.5 in 30 minutes, it's going to turn it down. If you're predicted to hit 120, within 30 minutes, it's going to turn your basal up and it'll turn it up quite a bit, up to four times the amount if needed to get you back down in that 110 to 120 range when you wake up in the morning. And it's pretty remarkable how it works. So um, more sleep, that's what we want, right? So 80% overnight sensor time and range for our study participants. And I think that maybe some of you were in our study. Um, it, it's pretty remarkable how, and a, another slide when we go down a little further is gonna show you the, um, the data from how great sleep activity works. It's, um, it's for parents, for people with kids on control IQ. And the sleep activity, we get these phone calls all the time saying, we slept last night and I can't believe it, you know, because there's no alarms or anything and the kids are sleeping. Um, but then people, after training, people will call or text or whatever and say, it's the best night's sleep I've had in years because, you know, it's just modulating your basal. There's no alarms and things going off. So now let's talk about the exercise activity. So a lot of people will go low when they're exercising. And it's a narrower, higher range of treatment values that we're trying, we're modulating the basal with these treatment values of 140 on the low and 160 on the high. But it's, if you're predicted to hit 80 on the way down, it's gonna stop your basal. So see how it, like our, our speaker Molly says, it pumps the brakes on the basal at a lot higher rate so it'll really try to keep you from going low while you're doing exercising, while you're exercising. 
or while you're doing anything that tends to make you go low. Some people have active jobs, you know, chasing little kids around the classroom or something. On the uphill side, if you're predicted to hit 160, it's going to increase your basal, and it is going to give an automatic correction bolus when you're predicted to hit 180, because some people will go low when exercising, kind of the um, long distance stuff, but when you're really aggressively exercising, sometimes you'll go high. So it'll still give the automatic correction bolus with the exercise activity. So the way that you start that, it's not like you can't schedule it like you do with sleep. The way that you start that is you will go to um, activity, you'll go to your pump and you'll hit the options and hit activity and you'll start exercise. And this little running guy will show. And so you know that it's on there, you know that it's turned on. So if the little running guy is on, it's in that sleep um, activity with the higher treatment values. So you'll tap start and then when you're done exercising, you'll go back and you'll tap stop once your body has has recovered a little bit. So some people recommend, some providers recommend, and people that are on the pump recommend that you um, start the exercise activity, just like you would with before with a temp rate, an hour before, half an hour before, whatever worked for you with setting the temp rate. You'll start the exercise activity and let yourself run a little bit higher before you um, start your activity. All right, so this is what the little guy looks like. See the little runner up there? That's what it looks like when you turn it on. Settings are the foundation of this. And I'd mentioned it earlier that your settings it, are so important. The basal rate is important. The um, correction factor and the carb ratio are really important. You teach the pump. You, the pump doesn't learn you. You teach the pump all about you. Okay, so these are really important for you and, and your doctor to adjust on, a, you know, on your meetings when you see them and, um, and your educator, what, whoever provider you see. So you continue to use personal profiles to adjust to lifestyle changes based on your provider recommendations. So when control IQ technology is on, this target BG is automatically going to change to 110. And I talked earlier about how that target is used to modulate, to give an automatic correction, a correction or modulate your basal to keep you at that 110. And insulin duration is automatically set to five hours. Now, most of the time, it, some people will um, change it to like four or three and a half or whatever. But when control IQ technology is turned on, it's changed to five hours. And during our studies, we changed it to five hours to account for that little tail end of insulin that's left after four hours. And the study results showed a lot less low with a longer duration. So it's for safety and, it's, and it works really well. So when it control IQ technology is turned off, it's gonna go right back to what you program in there. So remember at the beginning of the presentation, we talked about how you can have a basic pump with no control IQ or basal IQ, and you can have uh, a control IQ or basal IQ pump. By the way, those are two different algorithms. So if you have basal IQ, you don't have the control IQ on your pump. So just so you know, I just wanted to clarify. All right, so the technology is awesome. We have made leaps and bounds with our um, control IQ and with our automated insulin delivery system. Um, but you can always beat an AID system with compulsive diabetes management. So systems work best when you let them work. You give the system a chance after you start it two to four weeks before deciding for long-term potential. Honestly, if you start this and you say, oh, this is not working for me, Get your provider or whoever's helping you with your diabetes management, get them to help you adjust the settings and it'll make all the difference in the world. So bolusing is still king. You have to bolus for your meals and you um, really should bolus for corrections as well. So bolusing is still king. Uh, king. And then rethink your lows with, with control IQ technology and basal IQ actually, rethink your lows. So if you're going low and you look and you don't have a bunch of insulin on board and the pumps already turned down your basal and it's already stopped your basal, 
maybe eating five or 10 grams of carbohydrates will be enough to turn you around the other way. So we just want you to rethink that the pump's already done some stuff for you and, um, and it might already have done enough for you. And as we know, infusion sets are still infusion sets. And for those of you that are not already on a pump, infusion sets are a great conversation to have with your provider before you start on the pump. Because basically, you know, it's a this great technology predicated on a little teeny tube that goes in your body. So it they're great, they're wonderful, but they're still infusion sets. So how are we doing on um, time? Oop. What happened to my oh I think I Janet, I don't think I did the um I don't think I did the rest of the slide presentation. Let me stop sharing this. Because you guys, I had a um, problem with my one computer. And let me, Janet, can I send you this and you bring it? Yes. The rest of it? Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. And maybe we can answer some questions. Yeah. Later. We have questions in the chat. Okay. And I'll send this to you if you want to. Okay. I know it's already 10 after. You're doing fine, Larry. If you want, after you send it, if you want to jump in the chat and read some of those questions, we can yeah. answer you. Okay. I'll start on the questions while you're doing that, Larry. Okay. So, so we have, um, when my delivery is off to a low protection, I go high after basal has turned off. So um, I'm gonna just kind of speak to that because we don't really have time to do a lot of specific troubleshooting in here, but um, I'll put my number in the chat afterwards and you guys can call me. The only, the time that I see that happening, honestly, and I don't know if this relates to you or not, is if people set their basils really high to try and um, work the system to get it to slow down insulin and keep you at the, at the lowest um, value possible. And then if the pump's off a lot because of that, as soon as you eat, you rise up real quick because there's not been enough basal insulin on board. Um, that's really kind of the time that I do see that. It's super fixable. But for other detailed stuff, I'm just gonna put my, my cell in the chat here. And if you guys wanna call me, please do, okay? So um, it's Janet Bola, 530 although now typing is covering it. Um, okay, so the next question is, do you have to set the sleep schedule each night? No, you can set a program. So that's what the sleep schedule is. You would say, I want you to turn on at you know 10 p.m. and turn off at 9 a.m. And then it would, and you select the days of the week you want it to do that, and it will just run accordingly. You have up to two of those you can set should you have a difference between weekend and weekday, um, but that's how that rolls. Or the other option is just to say, turn on, and then it would turn on. Um, so that's that. Um, my daughter is 12 and going through unpredictable pu pu prepubital hormone swing. She's not on a pump yet. We have to adjust her basic bar by quite a bit over the course of the month. Can the pump adjust to her bigger swings? Um, I would say to that, yes, because it's the pump settings that you program into there, and that's what it's working off of, and then it kind of modulates accordingly. So it's kind of like you doing your basic law adjustments, it's doing those adjustments in the moment. Now, if she didn't have such wild swings, you know, with this hormonal stuff, and believe me, I know about that because I raised a kid with type 1, they're little hormone machines. Um, if she didn't have those hormone surges, yes, she would, she, you know, she probably have a little better control. And when that kind of simmers down a little bit, you'll see that. But I guarantee you that control IQ can help with that, help out with that quite a bit. Um, and that is the advantage of the pump not having to learn you. Other algorithms where they do learn you, they've learned you for X, Y, Z type days. And when you get that hormonal surge or you go on that vacation, 
that learning they've done isn't really helping in this new situation. So you can program your pump and then it will adjust. Another thing you can do is you, you can take that program that you created and create an alternative one so that if you do have significantly different days, it can then work off of those settings. So an example of that might be, you know, people that are getting, um, you know, prednisone shots or people that are going to be in a marathon or if you have really different pre and post menstrual numbers, that's the type of situation you can use that for. Um, so Larry, did, do you want to? I did hang on one second. You know, um, I'm trying to send it over and it's just such a big file that um, it's having a hard time okay. sending it. But um, there, well, are those all the questions that you had? No, there's more. We're at 615. So maybe we you could answer the rest of these and then we can just open it up for people to you know, verbally ask questions. The next one, and please add anything to what I've said already, Larry, if you want. Okay, all right. But the um, next one, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I think I can find this, but by the time, yeah. sorry, everybody, for some reason, my um, video wouldn't show on one computer. So right before y'all got on, I um, opened another computer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay, the next question is, I'd like to know exactly how waterproof the pump is. My old T-Slim failed after only 30 minutes in the water. So honestly, our pump, like every other pump um, that's out there, it's like whatever waterproof rating you have, that's gone as soon as there's a little crack in it, even a hairline fracture that you can't necessarily see. So with ours, it's three feet for 30 minutes is what our official rating is. Um, and that does work. But if there's a, that screen, which Larry said can't crack, it, it's got that um, aluminum folding over it slightly. So if it falls, it is protected, but if it takes a big whack of a fall, it could have a little crack in it. And, and you may not see that and water can ingress into that. So um, that's the story there. Um, can you, what's that? Thank you for jumping in. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Um, can you speak directly to the difference between the Mini Med 670G and the T-Slim? Do you want me to take that, Larry, or do you want to take it? No, go ahead. Okay. Um, so basically, and I will take a moment to turn on my computer so we can see each other. Um, so the 670G and the um, TSLIM are worlds apart and I would encourage you to jump on a little social media and see what people are saying. But the 670G, um, the sensor isn't the DECCOM, it has to be calibrated. Um, it's not FDA approved to deliver for meals. It, it just isn't as accurate. And if you have a pump algorithm that's rolling off a sensor that doesn't have the um, peak accuracy, that is gonna be a, a bit of a limitation there. And then the um, 670G algorithm is one that, that learns you. And, um, and it's, if it doesn't like what's going on there and it has multiple factors that it's measuring, um, it will kick you out of the algorithm. And um, you'll have to calibrate to get back in. There's various things you have to do. So you'll see in social media, that is a frustration that people have had with that system is that they have a heck of time staying in, um, in the algorithm. So I could go on. Um, it's also a bigger pump. Um, I could go on, but I, maybe that's enough for right now. I think um, basically one of the things that I hear over and over again, because I, I take people from the Medtronic pump over to the T-Slim pump. And what I hear more than anything is that, for example, there's a, a man that we have up at um, Sansom that he does different, totally different things from day to day. So with him, he's doing so much better because the personal profiles that you can set on the, on the T-Slim pump start again with your basal rates, your correction factor, your carb ratio where he has a day where he's kind of sedentary at an, at an office, but he has a second day, a different type of day where he's super active. So he has different needs, different basal rates, different um, correction factors for the days where he's super active compared to the ones where he's um, not active or nighttime versus daytime if you're a nighttime nurse or something like that. 
you set your different profiles where with the with the 670g it's learning you over the course of a couple of weeks but what happens if your days are remarkably different like that well it's learned this day and this day but not not the day separately so that's what i hear more than anything in addition to the fact that it's just so nice not to be asked to calibrate when you're driving a car or when you're in a movie or when you're sound asleep right so those are the things that i hear that are the the biggest differences um thank you um and it it's not a predictive algorithm it's a very very different algorithm so i won't go into what that means but just know it's kind of like we're looking in the future and making changes to accommodate that versus just kind of right now in the moment let's adjust let's adjust um, okay, I had a Cosmo Deltec pump. That was the best. I've used the Medtronic and the Omnipod. Not so impressed. The tandem is impressive. I am from San Diego. Yay! <laughs> if it wasn't lockdown or if it wasn't COVID, I would say come on by because you know, our customers are super welcome. But it is, you know, there's not a lot of people now there and the access isn't quite as great. Um, but yes, try T-Slim. We're, we love our products. So do our customers. Um, all right, and then Nancy's, um, I was told three feet for 30 minutes for the life of the pump, please clarify. So we, you know, we stand behind that claim, um, meaning that if you're in there for three feet, 30 minutes and it dies, we will replace the pump. Right. So that's kind of what we mean for the life, of, for the warranty. It's for the warranty of the pump. We'll replace it if, if something happens to it. Yeah. Jim, there was one question earlier on, um, I think it was one of the first questions, and it, um, Laura asked, does the metal case set off metal detectors in the airport and elsewhere? Uh, yes. Um, oh, I see the other questions. It does set them off. So when you go through, you either have to, I, I mean, my son wears this pump, obviously. I, I just say, hand to the guy to swab. That's the best way. You're keeping your eye on the pump the whole time, and you're not going to sound off alarms. Other options are to walk through and let it buzz and then get the, um, the pat down or the massage as I like to call it, but that will slow you a little bit. Um, we don't recommend that you put it through the x-ray with the computers one, it's, it's out of sight, but also no pumps are supposed to go the, through those because really potentially they can cause some kind of little short circuiting um, as I understand. Um, can you turn off the alarms? Yes, you can turn off most of the alarms. There's an alarm on there that if you're um, under 70 and we can't do anything about it or you're predicted predict to be under I 70. Blair, are you talking yeah, about I it? Yeah, I can speak to that. I do this all yeah. day long. So Thank there you. are two alarms that you can't turn off, um, but you can put them on vibrate. So if it tries to wake you up, you know, cause you're predicted to hit, you're actually at 200 and the pump has already increased your basal rate. It's already giving you an automatic correction bullet, but you're at 200 and you're still climbing. The pump's gonna vibrate and try to gently save your life. And if it can't get your attention, well, it is going to escalate. So you are eventually gonna hear it. So that's one alarm that will, you'll eventually hear it. If you're, but answer to your questions, you can put them all on vibrate. And if you don't pay attention, it's going to keep yelling at you. So the other control IQ alarm is if you're predicted to hit 70 within 15 minutes and it's already decreased your basal and it's already stopped it and you're still going to hit 70 within 15 minutes, it is going to vibrate. If it can't get your attention, it's going to escalate. So you'll eventually hear it. Um, other alarms that will if you put them on vibrate, we'll try to get your attention and then eventually um, the ones that it's trying to save your life. Your battery's almost dead, the rechargeable battery, and um, you're almost out of insulin. So those things it needs to tell you, but it's all adjustable where you can turn them on vibrate and then know that it's gonna get louder if, you, if it doesn't, it can't get your attention. Um. Another question is how long is the Dexcom is essential on the Dexcom? It's a 10 day sensor. Right, and a three month um, transmitter. I finally got the other PowerPoint up, but I think we're out of time. Yeah. So do you guys have any questions that you just wanna chat about live? And do you guys wanna see, um, I think one of the things I'd really like to show you or talk to you about is that um, we have a T simulator app that um, 
it, it, it will allow you, those of you who have not seen the pump, it will allow you to play with the pump and, um, and kind of pretend like you're using it if you want to use the T simulator app. So I can, I can bring up that or just show it to you on my phone. I don't want to bring up the thing, but, but the T simulator app will allow you to put your settings into it and it'll allow you to, um, play with it and give a bolus and do all the cool things that the pump does. So if you want to do that, we also have a mobile app, a T-Connect mobile app. So the T-Connect mobile app will allow you to see your, um, your, what's going on in your pump on your app. I mean, right on your phone. Including your Dexcom. If you are going to use that um, app for the simulator, I just recommend turning off the tool tips before you um, oh, yeah. start exploring. Otherwise, it has all these little pop-ups that get um, that get in your way of, of going through it. I mean, you can leave them on there till you get the guided tour, but then once you really want to play with it, just turn the tool tips off. Let's see. I don't know what is wrong with my, it's like getting me back for saying, come on, use your computer. <laughs> so anyway, let me show you the, there we go. So everybody can download that um, by going to the app store or the Google play on their pump. And um, I mean, on their phone and download the app. Let's see, I'm just going to share this because it's not doing it. I'm telling you, this is like paid. Yeah. We're not, I don't <laughs> think it's going to happen. Yeah, but the T-Simulator app. Oh, there it is, we got it. Yeah, and I can show you the T-Simulator app is here and then right above it. So this is all the other cool stuff I had to share with you. But the um, T-Simulator is here. So this one will allow you to, um, so like Janet said, here's the tool tips. If you wanna learn what every single thing is, um, the tool tips are on there. It'll show you um, what, you know, if you do that, the T-Connect, I mean the Control IQ or the Basil IQ, it's either in the App Store or Google Play. What's great about this app too, is that you can learn more about Control IQ or Basil IQ. You can learn on this app to see how to update your pump if there's something that's available for you. Um, and the, the training resources, it'll take you right to the website on your phone so you can look up what you need on that. And then we also have something new that um, is a T-Connect web application. So we've always had the T-Connect web application to look at your reports. But now we have two-way Bluetooth in the Control IQ and updated Basil IQ pumps, where it'll allow you to see your pump screen right here on your phone. And um, that's something that's you know very new. It's just it came out during COVID, and um, it's been great. You see, you're on your phone, so you're looking at your phone, and everybody looks at their phone. So nobody's going, "What are you looking at?" So it'll show your. Um, your blood sugars and what, how much insulin you have on board, what your last bolus was. Um, you can even see all your settings on there too. Larry, can you bolus from that app? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> Good question. Yeah. So um, that's a real tough, that's, you know, of course we have all these goals and dreams at um, Tandem and we're really not allowed to talk about what's coming up, but um we have a whole team of people working on apps and you know things in the future and we're working closely with the fda of course they're great they they really like our company and working with us and we're innovating all the time so for That's now great. you have this you can share you know then your doctor your provider can always see your data and then if you don't have your phone with you all the time then you'll go ahead and upload to the t-connect app any questions about that See, this is what I wanted to show you, time and range. <laughs> so that's, this is really, this slide is so impactful. And if we close on this, it's already 6.30. This is so impactful for everyone that has diabetes type one, type two. 
We um, are now focusing on time and range because there's many faces of a 7% A1C. And as we know, an A1C is an average over the last two or three months of your glycemic variation. And so time and range is 70 to 180, but see this A1C is still a seven, right? 7%, even though there's these huge variations. This one is also um, a seven A1C with a 70% time and range. And this is a seven with 100% time and range. So that's why we focus more on the time and range to get rid of those big fluctuations. And that's what Control IQ is gonna do for you to improve your time and range. Okay, all right. I think we're at our 6.30 mark. I have more to show you, but since I fumbled around, I won't belabor. Well, thank you, Larry and Janet so much. This has been so informative. And I just want to encourage our audience, if you have questions um, or just, you know, specifically want some answers um, or, you know, to be walked through this, Larry and Janet are uh, more than willing to help you out. I encourage you to go to Tandon's website to learn more about the pump, uh, you know, pump therapy and kind of how that works. Um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to point you in the right direction as well. And um, thank you all so much for your time and for joining us. We're really excited to uh, at least meet virtually for now. <laughs> thank you guys. Thank, thank you. Everybody. Have thank a great you. night. Yeah.